All right, so this morning we are standing in front of Chris's JL, and this is a 2019 JL. It has a three and a half inch lift kit on it, and it happens to have our long arm kit on it. So this Jeep has been built for four years, and Chris lives here uh, right next to our shop, Northern California, and the Rubicon is his back door. So it's, it's a common thing where Chris wakes up on a Sunday morning and says, you know, what the hell, I'm gonna go run the Rubicon and have brunch in Tahoe and be home by five o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, he does that. So he, he wheels with quite a, little, quite a bit of momentum and speed and he wheels on hard trails. Not only that, he drives this Jeep uh, kind of like a weekend driver slash uh, secondary vehicle. It has 17,000 miles on it since it got the lift kit. Um, and this is our long arm kit. So this is a great example of what your Jeep will look like after you abuse it for four years and everything is still together, everything is still working and driving great, but Chris brought it to us and uh, told us to give it a look over and check out what's going on and uh, I'll show you what we found on this thing. He has three and a half inch Evo HD coils, front and rear, 37 inch Nittos, and it has uh, method forged beadlocks. He happens to uh, uh, be a part of GBR Racing, so we got a screaming deal on these forged method beadlocks. So first off, four years old on the 37-inch Nitto Trail Grapplers, 17,000 miles, they got a ton of traction on them still, but you can just start to see cracking inside the tread of the tire. So he's getting right to that point where the tires aren't worn out, but it's gonna start shaking and uh, driving a little worse, maybe a little uh, uh, wobble down the highway. But basically, it's just the rubber of the tires are getting old and they're starting to crack. So he's at that point where at the end of this season, he's gonna need some new tires. You look underneath the front here, so he has our heavy duty tie rod and drag link. What a great way to test it, but check this thing out. Just rock rash all the way down. This is the early warning device when you're only on 37s on the Rubicon. Two inch quarter wall DOM tubing, just been smashing it. Um, not a lot of marks up high because all the rocks come underneath, hit the tie rod, and then they also hit the front diff and you know underneath the axles, right? So he has the stock front diff cover on this thing. The bolts are actually like ground in half, but nothing's failed, nothing, nothing's leaking, so he spent his money in the right spots with the suspension, the tires, the wheels, and eventually he'll do some diff cover work. So right here, Rage Forth front bumper. We've been using these for a long time, and you see the rock rash on the bottom of the bumper right here. This used to have an extra skid hanging down, but Chris decided he wanted the clearance instead of having the skid. So after we built it, he unbolted the skid. And then right here, you can see the frame horns. Uh, the frame horns were cut off so they don't ha hang down. So he has more clearance. It does leave the sway bar disconnect motor exposed, but uh, he said it's worth the risk. Let me drive it, see if I hit it, see if I break it. He has not. And this is doing some of the most extreme wheeling as you can see. So. As we walk around to the side here, um, you can see pretty simple. Uh, three and a half inch lift, 37s with our long arm kit. So these are the Evo rock sliders and they're body mounted. And as you can see all underneath here, Chris has hit just about everything, right? Um, they're not smashed in, the body doesn't seem destroyed. Uh, they mount underneath into the body mounts here. We did not have to clearance them for our long arm bracket, which is nice. And then they also have this extra piece from Evo just to protect the aluminum body. Um, you can see he's got factory fender flares on this thing, clearing the 37s. Uh, at some point at full flex, they will rub just a little bit. He's removed the back section here. That's the most common part uh, to rub. But other than that, factory fenders, 37s, three and a half inch lift. Um, let's look underneath here and see what these rocks have been doing underneath. So here's our WFO long arm. These are two inch quarter wall links. Look at that rock rash all the way down the link. The links are made to fall on the rocks, scrape, skid on the rocks all the way. He's got differential hit. Um, this thing has the metal cloak skid plates underneath. And if you take a look all the way from front to back, tons of rock rash on there. 
We powder coated these skid plates black when we put them in. Uh, one of the things you do have to look at if you wheel your Jeep this hard is the skid plates are slightly bending up and it doesn't matter whose plates you're gonna use. They're all gonna move and tweak a little bit. And in this case, this front section here protecting the transmission has moved up just a hair and it started to rub on the exhaust so he was getting a little rattle. So basically all we did is pop the skid plate off, bend it down a little bit, no more exhaust rattle. Um, you come to the back here, more skid plate rash. You can see the boot on the drive shaft has been torn from hitting a rock and shoved back. Um, it still drives perfectly smooth, doesn't shake. You know, over time, probably dirt and mud can get up and in here, but it's still got lubrication on it. Uh, he's gonna make this drive shaft work another season. These are our lower control arm mounts for our long arm kit. And just like the front, they're designed for the rocks to hit this, scrape, get the bottom of the link. Look at this link. All the way down, the link is just rock rash, but you know, that's okay. It can slide on there, it can get you through the trail. He actually added these R-Tech um, bottom skid plates because on the back of the JL, the shocks are so exposed, at least get a little bit more protection here. Um, while you're back here, you can see one thing he does have is the King two and a half inch uh, shocks with adjustment. So not too fancy on the build, stock axles. We did re-gear it to 488s. Bottom of the diff is nice and scraped, but look at that, factory diff cover still in the rear, just the bottom ground out. Um, so it does prove that you don't have to go over the top with your axles to do hardcore four wheeling. Um, all the way to the back here, you can see the muffler has a couple dents on it. He did have to cut the tailpipe off because one time he pinched it down, but it's still factory muffler on this thing, uh, working fine. And like I said, wheeling it really hard. The back bumper here is a Rage 4th rear bumper. You can see the underneath, quite a few rock scrapes. He did kind of hit his uh, trailer hitch receiver. And then, you know, one thing that is hard to avoid, but it's here in this spot, is your trailer hitch wiring does hang down on these things. And as hard as he wheeled in, as many rocks as he hit, you know, as a test dummy, it's still here and still working and still usable. Um, this has our rear spare tire delete on it as well so he likes to travel nice and light um, and with the combination of the king shocks and uh and not having a ton of weight this thing really does make it through the rubicon fast and comfortable um, you can see our side brackets here uh, some people will argue that the long arm exposes the bracket and the arms more to the elements and to the rocks and that is true i mean it's got rock scratches on it it's got scratches on the, on the lower control arm. But the help with the geometry and the ride and the flex, in our opinion, is worth it. And Chris has kind of proved it, that you can go out there, beat on these things, and hold it all together. Um, you can even see the body mounts, you know, bent back here. He's getting rocks all the way up into there. Um, you know, all the skids. So, you know, one of the things you have to realize is like what your risk reward is. and in this with full belly skid plates only running 37s low to the ground easy to get in and out of handles and drives amazing um, and he spent he spent the money where it counted he went for the long arm he went for you know in the front as well the king two and a half inch uh, remote reservoir with the clickers uh, went with good shocks went with good wheels bead locks um, and kept it simple and you look at this thing when it's sitting on the ground with stock fenders and just bumpers and sliders, it really doesn't look that custom. And then you look underneath and you see what he's doing with it. And uh, it just goes to show you that you spend your money in the right places, you go out, you can beat on it and have fun all the time. This thing still has the factory drive shafts in it. Um, I will say that after approximately 10 trips a year and wheeling this thing for four years, so 19, 20, 21, and 22, on the Rubicon, basically, extensively, um, you know, all good things do need a little bit of maintenance. And so he had us look through all the suspension components and we ended up changing uh, three front control arm bushings that were uh, starting to show some wear after all that trail mileage. The rear bushings still looked great in our WFO long arm kit. So we just replaced the front bushings and it was a simple Take it apart, pop the bushings out, put new bushings in. It's good to go for another four years. So 
Uh, if you're looking into our long arm kit or want to do some suspension on a JL, uh, this is the abuse you can put it through. This is our long arm kit with King shocks and our heavy duty tie rod and drag link. So I hope you see Chris out on the trail and he's beating on it and making another one of those six hour trips through the Rubicon. See ya.